Kalu Minglava. This is Bagan, which is located in the middle of Myanmar in Southeast Asia. There are more than 3,000 ancient pagodas and temples. All of them were built in a, between 11th century to 13th century. Now we are at the entrance of Nyangaba village, which was called Anurada in ancient Pagan period. Most of the people in this village, they earn with making Lakawea since 11th century. In 11th century, the king of Mon country, southeast part of Myanmar, and his followers moved to Pagan. At the same time, more handicrafts technicians moved Pagan too. Before 11th century, people in Pagan, they didn't work for Lakawea. Only when more technicians arrived in Pagan, just studied and produced Lakawea. That is why the people in this village, they are still producing their traditional Lakawea. In this village, there are many Laka factories. So, this is one of the best Lakawea factory in this area. That is Golden Kaku. This is our Golden Kaku Lakawea workshop. And here, we produce Lakawea, which is made of bamboo, wood, horse tail or horse hair. Those are our traditional raw material of Lakawea products. Now, we would like to present how to make our traditional Lakawea. These are the bamboos. Those were carried along the Iyawri River from the northwest part of Myanmar. From there to Bagan, it takes about one month. The name of the bamboo is Matinga, which is the longest bamboo in our country because its length is about 60 feet. We use this bamboo to make the Lakawea. The business material of Lakawea is bamboo. From the bank of the river to home, we have to carry these bamboos by pullo cart. Each pullo cart can carry about 30, 35 bamboos. The bamboos are getting wet in the water that is better to use as lacquerware like because the insects cannot eat these bamboos easily. Now we are getting the bamboos. These bamboos, we got it from the northwest part of Myanmar. We carry by the river, and then we carry from the jetty to here by pulo cuts. Right now, the gentleman, he is cutting the bamboo. When they cut uh, the bamboos, we, they don't want to get the joints of the bamboo, only they wanted to get the meat of the bamboo. So after cutting the bamboo, we get a short bamboo which is without joint. So that one we have to divide to get small pieces. That is why right now the young gentleman is dividing the bamboo to get the small pieces. After dividing the bamboos, we have to be smooth the bamboo, the corner line of the bamboos, because of those corner lines make the problems for the fingers. And then, when the bamboo is getting smooth, the people, they have to slice the bamboo. When the bamboo is smooth, 
we have to slice very thin bamboo sheets, which becomes flexible. After slicing the bamboo, we have to split out the bamboo. When we split it out, those bamboo sheets will be very flexible. When we have the flexible bamboo sheets, we have to make the different shape of the objects. Those are the cups which we can use for the soup and the green tea. And the flat plate where we can fill up the fruits or steam rice. And then flat bowl that ones we can fill up steam rice or salad we can fill up. And then the bowl that we can use to fill up soup. And then wedding box or offering box. And beetle box. So those are different shapes of the objects of the our lacquer factories. When we have uh, the different objects, so those we have to start it from the one sheet of the bamboos. If you look at, we have to cut the bamboo as a hook and then we make a circle. When we have the circle, we have to fill up more layers of the bamboo sheets as tapering. What type of the object we like to get, we can adjust less or more bigger circle and then we make the different shape. There's uh, two different types of making objects, tapering and weaving. 
This is the weaving the button of the objects. After that, we have to fit at the wooden mold and then continue for weaving. Now, this is weaving with the horse tail or horse hair. Each person can make it two cups in a day. We cannot finish many objects because the horse tail are very tiny. These are wooden objects which is going to be lacquerware cupboard, tables, wine glasses, and the tissue boxes. We make uh, these objects made of teak wood. This is laka liquid, which we get it from the laka tree. That is called Usitata in Bodnika name. Originally, the laka liquid, it came out from the tree as brown color. But when the sap of laka liquid dash with the oxygen, its color changed to the black color. Right now, we had to be melt like a liquid under the sunshine and filtering to be clean. When the raw objects are ready, we have to apply like a sap with the hugs of coconut because we want like a sap between the layers of bamboos. After applying with the lacquer sap, we have to be drawing those objects inside the cell room for a few weeks. As you see, this is at the cell room where we try to be drying our wet lacquer objects with humidity. Because wet lacquer objects, those cannot be drying under the sunshine. After seven days later, we take out those objects, which is applied with the lacquer liquid. But the surface of the objects are very rough. That is why we have to be smooth the objects with the calf knife. These are the edge of the kettle's bones and pure lacquer liquid. After smoothing the objects, we apply 
the whole body of the object with the plaster, which is mixed of the edge of the kettle's bones and a lacquer liquid. After that, we have to put it back inside the cell room for seven days. After seven days later, we take objects out and polish with the rough stone to be smooth. After smoothing with the rough stone, we apply the plaster with our fingers because our fingers can adjust like a liquid on the surface of objects, thinner or thicker. And like objects will be harder, stronger, and waterproof. Each time, if we apply like a liquid on the objects, we must keep them in the cell room to be dry. After three layers of the plaster on the objects, we have to polish the surface of objects. Now, please have a look. The lacquer object, which is getting smooth and harder, stronger, and waterproof. When it is smooth, we apply it with pure lacquer liquid till to 14 times. Each time of lacquer layer, we must keep it inside the cell room for seven days. After 14 times of the lacquer layers on the objects, it will be very bright to make a design. That is why we must polish on the surface with the powder of the tea coat charcoal so that we reduce brightness of the lacquer objects not to get reflections. Now you see, this is not very bright and ready to decorate with beautiful traditional designs. Now, we are getting plain lacquer objects and our designers make a design which is our old ancestors drew these designs since many centuries ago.
If you look at, these are the colors to use for our traditional lacquer wear. Those are red, green, yellow, and orange. All the colors, we get it from natural stone and a clay. After drawing designs on the plain lacquer objects, we begin to engrave for red color pictures. When we have the engraving lines for red color pattern, we mix the red color powder and a pure lacquer liquid as a glue. If we are ready, we apply red color paste on the object and Put it inside the cell room for three days. After three days, we take out red color objects and wash with the rice husk water, which is the husk of rice in the water. Because of the husk of rice can remove extra color on the surface of objects. And red color will remain inside the engraving lines. Now, as you see, how the red color pattern is coming out. After making designs, we have to create four different colors. Those are red, green, yellow, and orange. The basic color is red color. If you see black color design, we have to fill up with red color. If there is a red color on the objects, we have to continue for green, yellow, and orange. After getting red color design, we have to apply it with the acacia glue. So red color will be under acacia glue. And engrave with the sharpened iron needle for green color on the objects. Then fill up with the green color powder inside the engraving lines. And then put it inside the cell room. Last three days ago, we put these green objects inside the cell room. Right now, we take it out and then we will wash with the water. And then, if you look at after washing the water, we will find green color and a red color patterns. <laughs> When we have red and a green color pictures, we apply with the acacia glue. So red and a green will be under acacia glue. And then we engrave for yellow patterns. After that, fill up with the yellow color powder in engraving lines. And then we put it inside the cell room 
for three days. Right now, we take back yellow color patterns, objects, from the cell room. If we wash this yellow color objects, underneath we will find red, green, and yellow color patterns. And after that, when we wash with the water, the object will be wet. That we have to be dry, and when it is dry, we have to apply with the acacia glue. So that is why red, green, and yellow color will be under acacia glue. After applying with the acacia glue, we engrave the lines for orange color patterns, and fill up in engraving lines with orange color powder and lacquer liquid together. Then we keep those objects inside the cell room to be dry for three days. After three days later, we take them out from the cell room, and then we have to wash with the water. When we wash those orange colors, we will get four different colors. Those are red, green, yellow, and orange. When we have Full colors objects. We keep them back in a cell room more than seven days. That we make it sure to be dry and strong for our lacquer liquid and color of patterns. And then we polish with the petrified wood powder, and the full colors will be brighter. So this is our end of process. So from the beginning to the end, this process will take about seven months.